Welcome to the FileAid MVS Online Using Cross-Reference or XREF Files module. Here you will learn about the benefits of XREF files and how to build them for use with your data files. An XREF file is used for automating the selection and usage of record layouts for files with different record types using different record layouts. FileAid determines the record layout to use for each different record type by the value in one or more data fields in each record. At this point, those who have used XREF files previously and are only interested in learning how to build them may prefer to go directly to the scenario on the navigation panel to the left. Otherwise, a brief overview follows. The diagram shown here represents a data file. The record type column is included to illustrate that all records are of the same type and only one copybook or layout is needed. This diagram represents a different data file which contains two different record types. Two layouts are required. An XREF file would contain the rules for identifying type 1 records and using or displaying them with copybook A and for identifying type 2 records and using or displaying them with copybook B. Here we see an edit session open on a file that is a candidate for using an XREF file. This file contains data extracted from six different DB2 tables. The records are of differing lengths. The leftmost field indicates the record type. We will look at an example of how the XREF can be beneficial. From the FileAid primary option menu, we choose Browse to examine the contents of a file. Next, we choose Formatted Mode and enter the file name. We choose XREF for the record layout usage, then complete the XREF file name and member name. Entering the Browse session, we are positioned at the first record on the file. Note the COBOL data name and see how it changes as we scroll through the file to the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth records of the file. The correct record layout always appears on the screen. We will have a closer look at those layouts. Purchase orders are 184 bytes long. Internal work orders are 160 bytes long. Outside vendor work orders are 116 bytes long. Subcontracts are 174 bytes long. Now that you have seen the benefit to having an XREF file, we can look at how to build one. Here is the scenario. You are required to make several changes to a file containing four different order types. You could do this more efficiently if you could always have the correct record layout displayed automatically. The task is to build the appropriate XREF file. Record type 1 is a purchase order. The order type field contains PO. Record type 2 is a subcontract. The order type field contains SC. Record type 3 is an internal work order. The order type field contains WO and the contract indicator field contains IN. Record type 4 is an outside vendor work order. The order type field contains WO and the contract indicator field contains OV. With all of the resources in place, we can begin to build the XREF. From the FileAid primary option menu, we choose option 7. 
enter the name of the XREF file. It should be a PDS with a record length of 300 and record format variable blocked. The member name should be new. An existing member name will allow editing that member. The layouts used may exist in multiple members, so only the containing PDS must be entered. A concatenation list may be used as well. We enter the S line command to define the XREF information in formatted mode for the layout contained in member order PO. The formatted XREF definition screen is much like the selection criteria screen. The various show and display commands are available. There is a relational operator column where the standard and extended operators may be used. Multiple levels may be used if required. In this case, if the value in the order type field is PO, then the record layout shown here should be used. Returning to the definition screen, we see that FileAid has filled in the beginning data name and updated the status column. The next definition begins in similar fashion. And again we associate a value in the record with a layout. The results are similar. The next entry will take a different path because this member contains two record layouts. Here we see the list and we select the first entry. Here two conditions must be met to use this record layout. We see that the information is similarly updated. The final definition begins as the others did. This time the second layout is chosen. Here there are two options available. The first option is to define the criteria for the layout as done previously. This will result in the base status similar to the others. If we go back to the previous screen, the second option is to not define any criteria. This would result in a default base status. A default base is used for records not meeting any criteria specified. If a default base is used, it must be last. When the definitions are complete, the member name added message will appear. At this point, we will revisit the definition screen to look at some additional items. First, there is a generated filler length value. This may be used if the initial portion of a record is to be ignored. Let's look at an example. Here we see an edit session open on a file extracted from segments of an IMS database. The data records contain 42 bytes of prefix information, including database name, segment name, and concatenated key. We would use a standard IMS segment layout and tell FileAid to generate a 42-byte filler when using it as an XREF layout. Back on the definition screen, Line commands may be used to manipulate the entries. We see copy and move, before and after, insert, repeat, and delete. The entries may be reordered to optimize the processing. Records are evaluated in the order shown, so those record types occurring most frequently should be tested first. Finally, the EX line command may be used to extract a layout embedded in program code. Since every detail and option of every screen was not covered, there are several options available for more information. 
First of all, the Phylate MVS User's Guide and Online Reference Manual are available for download on Frontline. Next, on the Phylate Primary Option menu, access to the tutorial is provided. Finally, on any screen within Phylate, pressing F1 will take you to the corresponding area within the tutorial. In this example, we are on the Define XREF screen. Pressing F1 for help displays the XREF definition tutorial screen. This concludes this module. Thank you.